Well, lads, let's get into it. Uh, I've just got back from the theater. Uh, so, this is not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I hope y'all are expecting something as perfection or as in-depth as the Rob Zombie Halloween critiques. Obviously, when I'm watching the Rob Zombie Halloweens, I'm pausing, writing things down, etc., etc. When you're at the theater, you don't really have the the time or... or, or or, or, like, the pause, you don't have the luxury, or pause the movie, write things down that you notice, etc., etc. This is all, like, gonna be coming out from memory, it's gonna be very disorganized, disjundled, blah, blah, blah. So, m maybe when the movie comes to streaming, I'll do a, a more in, a more in-depth analysis closer to the Rob Zombie Halloween reviews and every further Halloween review down the line. It's just when you're at the movies, you don't have time to really, to really, like, do that. So... Well, let's see. How is this going to work? I, I think the best thing to do here is I'm going to... I think you can say some spoiler-free stuff first. So we're going to get into some spoiler-free stuff. And then after the spoiler-free stuff is done, I will go ahead and warn everybody when the spoilers are going to come. And I'll put a... put a, And I'll put like a spoiler-free section start up versus when the spoilers start in the actual comment section and then pin it. For everybody that, that that wants to sort their way through this fucking thing. Okay? So, let's just fucking get right into it. The movie was good. The movie was good. The movie was pre basically pretty much what it needed to be. And that's... You needed to, to plant the seeds of something deeper. But overall, find that balance. It's a killer doll movie. Have fun with the concept. But still... You know, just make sure you're striking that balance. Don't worry about the PG-13 rating. Your character work's going to carry you. And all in all, they did a great job. Everything that needed, everything this movie needed to be, it was. I was surprised. This is this is getting into like the spoiler-free stuff. Megan is a character in the movie. Like I, I know that, that's something that I guess we shouldn't really be surprised about. But I was surprised in with the amount. I guess I really shouldn't have been surprised about it based on the trailers. But like she fucking said things like Jesus Christ. Uh, when she said said in the trailer, I swear to God. Like she said, she said very. She had very human lines that, 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 that wouldn't exactly come from an AI doll, i.e. Chucky 2019. She, she sounded, again, it, it's, like, it's like we talked about in the initial um, predictions, which again, that video actually held up pretty well. Like a lot of the stuff I thought they were going to do, they, they actually did. Again, not super deep, not spend 50 minutes on it. But, you know, enough to where, like, I, I can tell that the, the person writing this had enough narrative sense to know where they needed to take this. So, they definitely, they, they definitely plucked the themes of, like, motherhood and more general parenting stuff. Like, like there, there's a, there, this movie says a lot about uh, our parenting in our modern times. Which is a direction I didn't actually predict they were going to go in, but they actually did. And it was a pleasant surprise, because it's, it's not that I didn't predict it as in I didn't think they were going to... I just didn't even think that was on the table. So, like, the, the, the thing that this says about parenting is, is just... is up there. It, 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 there's a lot of... There's a lot of interesting kind of commentary that, that, that I thought this movie delivered on that particular subject. And, like, what is parenting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is good parenting versus bad parenting, blah, 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 blah. So, I thought that that was... Uh, I thought that that was well done. That 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 aspect of the movie was was well done. Uh, another th another direction that they kind of took the movie was uh, consumerism. Like the, this movie takes a big the, the, some of the other commentary, this deeper stuff in this movie is, is like the, the 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 idea of consumerism and, and kids as these as these things to be kind of marketed to, and and it's like and that kind of dehumanizes them a little bit. Like the dehumanization of Katie through. Her, her having to, like, do some of the things she does in this movie involving Megan. Uh, like, just, just like, 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 like her, her, her own situation is something that is not, never brought up by uh, the asshole that runs the company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, the, the, the business people at the top, they, it, it showcased the disconnect between the people that sell the products and the people that buy the products, like, as in the kids. Like, there's these fucking snobs at the top and these, and these corporate business clowns that are at the top that are marketing and selling this crap, and, and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They don't really know what the fuck they're selling. One of the lines that the, the dickhead has is literally just, like, make me sound like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And again, this is, I mean, that might be 
y'all might not like that. I don't think that's a spoiler. This is just talking about some of the deeper things, not going to the specifics of, of the plot. So overall, they, that, that, that consumerism idea and all that crap, it's in there. And again, like maybe when I'm doing a review of this one day, I can go deeper into some of these themes. But this is just some of the stuff you notice on, on your first initial viewing. Let's combine with the spectacle, like stuff like, you know, like stuff, like all that crap. Like you're, I, I'm trying to do a mix of thinking about stuff and enjoying myself at the theater because this this was an entertaining movie, and they, the rating did not get in the way at all. Again, I told you not to worry about the rating because I knew that the character work is what was going to carry this movie. And again, the character work did carry this movie. Uh, the, the 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 three the three characters are are handled well. Me- Megan's handled well. Katie's handled well. And uh, Gemma, Gemma, Jenna, Gemma. KD. It's not. It's not KT. It's KD. C A D Y. I saw that in the end credits. It's not KT. It's KD. So there you go. And Gemma. I don't know why they show such weird names, but it's whatever. Uh. Uh. So so let's like so like all the, so like the, those seeds were planted like they needed to be, and the movie is just entertaining as as all hell. Like it, it, it's it, it's a it's a nice little ride. It's not as wild of a ride. Like the PG thirteen is never going to like create the most wild thrill ride of a horror movie that you can imagine. Like, obviously, stuff like, like, even the Rob Zombie Halloweens, they take you on a more wild ride than this does. Especially the first one. Maybe the, the second one's kind of scaled back a little bit and the character work is the central focus, but, like, uh, in terms of, like, a wild ride, uh, that, like, even something like a Halloween 4 it, it takes you on a more wild ride than this. On a Nightmare on Elm Street, stuff like that. Like, but, but, like, the, the, but, like, Oh, the, the movie's still entertaining as, as all hell. The, the third act is is good, and I mean the whole movie's just good. Like the like the, like the, it's paced very well. The pacing is very good. Just they, the, the the script is good, and and just like they did. It, it, I mean, it's not gonna win any Oscars. It's not gonna it's not gonna fucking be up for award consideration. Obviously, it's a it's a fucking killer doll movie. But like. All in all, the thing, the thing, like, like, oh, we're gonna do a killer doll movie. What can we expect? They hit everything. They hit everything that they needed to do. And again, I, I believe this was better than the fucking Child's Play movies. I, I really do. I really do. There was a cute little nod to a Child's Play two uh, in, in this as well, which we'll get to that when we when we cover it. But like, th- th- there there was some. You, you could tell that they you could tell that they watched the Child's Plays. Um, the world building was handled a little bit better. Not not a lot better. It, 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 a lot of some stuff feels really skinned over, and again, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that. Like the world, the world building was a mixed bag. Now, on some aspects, it was definitely better than the Child's Play. The, the, the Megan definitely felt more in line with the world she was in, but the world she was in was still rather unclear. It felt like, but like, it felt like that we were. This movie took place in like 2045, like a little bit into, but like maybe maybe 2060s. Like it's a little bit into the future. But not so far into the future, if that makes any sense. But but it, but also like the movie wasn't really clear about what time period this was set in. Like just a little little something would have been nice for clarification's sake. But oh, it's not a major problem. Uh, there was some there was something set up that did not have. I mean, it had a slight payoff. But but like, every setup doesn't have what I would consider to be a proper payoff, if that makes any sense. There, there was, there was one key thread that I thought was a bit underdeveloped. It wasn't even really a key thread. It was, just, it was almost throwaway. But it was, it was this thread that they thought they were gonna do something with, and they never really do anything with it, except Megan kind of mentions it. But yeah, they, they don't really, they don't really go into to more detail other than that. So, and then the ending is good. Uh, what? Good, it's just, it's just all in all good stuff. I'm trying not to. I'm really trying not to do spoilers. I'm trying not to say anything. It's just the the setting is used in in the, like the setting is used in the finale, and I and, and and I thought they I thought they did a good job. They made a nice little movie here. They made a nice little movie, and that it, it's it, it probably will be remaining in the top five for horror this year because like it, it's going to be hard to beat this. The January horror curse seems to be over, lads. So very very a very good. I enjoyed the shit out of it. It's not, it's, I mean, if you want the meaning of life, you're obviously not going to find it here. 
but it, it, it was it, it was good. For, for what it needed to be, it was definitely good. And it definitely did plant those seeds that a rewatch or maybe two or three rewatches will have me on here talking for an hour and 30 minutes. At a later date, when it comes available for streaming, I'm sure. Okay, I think that's all I can really say without getting into uh, spoilers. So, uh, from this point on, we will be getting into spoilers for, for this movie. Okay, so spoilers for Megan starting in three, two, one, now. Okay, let's let's get started with the spoiler section. The spoiler section, I guess we'll start with the opening. The opening was honestly not what you would think it would be. It starts with this weird advertisement. Like it starts with a full-fledged commercial for this these these webkins like toys. Does anybody remember webkins? Anybody remember those things? Did anybody else have webkins when they were little? They had these little, you had these little stuffed animals that you would sync up to this to the website, and then you would take your thingy around the virtual website and you play games and earn coins and for your room and all this weird shit. It, it, but it was kind of like it kind they kind of looked like Gizmo or, or like fur babies or something. There's something in the real world that they reminded me of, but I didn't know what exactly they were. So if you know what those th- things reminded me of, in fucking fucking gremlins or something. I don't know. I felt like I had it in the theater, but like I lost it. It just these little fucking fur fur things. It starts with an advertisement for those, and then it's just like, and then you get, and then you get to see Katie in the back of the seat of the car, who has one. And obviously, we're getting into the parents' car crash, which is in the trailer. So I don't. That's really not a spoiler, but. You know, they say they say a few things about screen time, etc. Sort of stop for the bear, stop for the car, did 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 that. Snow snowmobile, whatever it is, comes snow truck crumbs in, crashes head on collision. Parents dead. Okay, they're done. So we then cut to uh, Gemma, the aunt, who is at work, and the the work pretty much defines her character. She's a bit under, she's honestly, honestly, if you want to want the truth, she's a bit underdeveloped. She doesn't really have a whole lot to work with. But again, I don't really feel like that's a problem because of the nature of what we do get separates her from us anyway. Because when, like, when, you, when you get, like, she, she is a workaholic in this movie. They don't really say that, but they, they imply it in some parts. She's basically, she's a workaholic. She's, a, she's single, she's got a house. No men, no friends outside of work. Like, you don't really see any of her personal life at all. It's mostly just work and then Katie when Katie shows up. And, and obviously she has, like, they, they, there's this, they, they try to present, you learn that they, like, use company funds to, like, develop Megan. She's, like, I'd say 85% there. And you actually get to see Megan before she's fully made. So she, you get to see, like, like the inner workings of her and then like the boss comes in and then like they do a failed demonstration of it and and then he's like but they have the thingy like the, the the competition he's the boss is pissed because because the competition for the for their toy is on sale at half price and he wants a cheaper model on his desk by friday or whatever the fuck he was talking about again that's i mean that's that's part of the consumerism aspect we were talking about like the, these people view fellow humans as these little sh- shit buggers that are just marketed to his character the boss in, in particular by the way he's played by the godzilla versus kong salesman who sell who tells uh 11 and the fat kid where to go to find the podcaster in, in godzilla versus kong funny stuff right there i'm just going to call him the godzilla versus kong guy but or the boss, whatever, interchangeable. But basically, he, he he's there to like say all that, and he's got some funny lines. Like this, this movie got a few laughs in the in the in the theater, more than a few actually. Like it was fun. It was some pretty pretty fucking funny movie in some situations. But so that's that's kind of the setup here. And after that fail, and after they fail on with the Megan's initial presentation, like. Katie is like on the desk, like 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 the aunt gets called because I guess she's the emergency contact or whatever. So she comes in and she takes Katie in into her house, and obviously she's doing a, 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 a not the best job at, at parenting this 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 traumatized kid or whatever the fuck. And again, that's something we were gonna kind of well, I kind of glossed over that that like the like the, the don't expect the best mother to be to out of out of the out of Gemma. 
because you're not going to get it because that's where the conflict is is going to come. Which, I mean, it did in some situations, but like it really wasn't leaned on as much as I thought it was going to be. They do mention it. Megan does mention it, especially toward the climax. But, like, it wasn't, it, I mean, it's mostly all subtext and all that fun stuff. But, again, what we do get of Gemma is when she brings Katie home, you actually, this is when we get to see her house for the first time. She's got, like, like, I guess the, the this world's version of Alexa, which but it seems to be a bit more advanced, and Megan seems to have like hacked it. Especially like the end of the movie implies that it's under Megan's control, or maybe she even possibly even transferred her consciousness or whatever the fuck into that uh, system. But that's spoilers for the end. <laughs> but you get to see how, and you get to see uh, how like she, like she, she lives in a very technical world where it's like. You know, she's always on the computer. She works with robots at work. Blah, 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 blah. But, but like her, her, her humanity is, is, is almost lost. It's kind of like Darth Plagueis. If anyone has read the Darth Plagueis novel. Where Darth Plagueis almost relates to droids more than other life forms. It's kind of like that aspect. So I kind of got what they were going for with her. Because I read the Darth Plagueis novel. So, it, it very, very similar looking situation there where she doesn't really fully know how to be human and you can see you can see in her interactions with the neighbors except with her neighbor etc etc but everybody that's not like a work relate uh, re like everyone who doesn't work with her professionally she doesn't really know how to carry on a conversation with them because she's so distant from the real world and more obsessed with the technological one something which katie uh actually mirrors in her obsession with the gizmo looking fucking things at the start and then obviously what what turns into an attachment to Megan when Megan is revealed. So basically after after I'm just summarizing here after uh, Gemma ends up overworking uh Katie she shows Katie uh, like her, her first robot she made in college or whatever the fuck this thing I think it's called what was it called fuck I don't know its name. Bruce or something, I, something like that. I don't, I forget the fucking thing's name. But you like control it by like putting your hands in these gloves, kind of like the robots from Pacific Rim, and you can move it by moving your hands, kind of, kind of like the robots from from Pacific Rim. So that's kind of how that how that works. And then Katie's like, if I had a toy like this, I'd never need another toy again. So that gives Gemma the inspiration to actually finish Megan. And then the very next scene is when the two of them are, 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 are kind of introduced to each other. And the boss ends up coming in and seeing the whole thing. Where Megan, like, paints a picture of Katie. And, like, they, they talk. And, again, Megan's dialogue is, like, human. It's very human. And, like, one thing I like about what they do with Megan is, like... I, I, wanted, I said I wanted her to have a, a, a understanding of human emotions and, and speech. So, like, I got that. I was satisfied with that. And one of the things they actually do is they use, like, point-of-view shots where you can, like, see what Megan sees. And Megan doesn't see the world as we see it. When Megan sees, like, a person, okay, like, she, her face, like, she zooms in on their face, and then, like, she gets, like, their, the top five things they're feeling and, like, the, the percentage-wise that they're feeling it. Like, if someone's feeling anxious, like, she'll have anxious 82%. Like, she's... She's almost, she's very calculated. Like, she's very calculative. She's very calculative. Which, again, which is not unlike the sociopaths and psychopaths. Like, I, I, I got enough of that in this. Because of the way that she sounds human for a lot, a lot of times. And, like, the way she, like, almost manipulates Katie. And, and what I think is probably the best scene of the movie, honestly. But when, when, when she's talking to Katie about after she, after she pushes, after she kills the bully which we'll get there but there's like she there's this good scene about uh, she actually manipulates katie and like like strokes her and sings to her it's very very like it's almost but it's like she doesn't i guess the one difference between megan like she doesn't understand what she's doing but she's doing it nonetheless if that makes any sense at all she's like it's not her intention to do anything bad Especially, it's, okay, it's her intention to, like, hurt things, but it's not her intention to, like, emotionally manipulate who she's protecting in, in Katie. It's not, that's not what she's trying to do when she's doing it, if that makes any sense at all. Because, again, you can't, holding Megan to, like, the same moral standard as, like, a human, it's hard to do. Like, we know it's, like, wrong what she's doing, and we know that she's kind of going over the line, 
But it, you can't, like, it, it, she's not human, so, like, she has no, like, moral responsibility, if that makes sense. Like, she has to be stopped, sure, but she's got no, like, moral guilt because she's not real. <laughs> she's not a real person, if that makes any sense. So, basically, Katie forms a link with her, and then in order to build data for the initial launch of what is supposed to be a line of Megan products, they, like, they, they're supposed to release a whole line of these fucking things. They need to, like, gather data. And so they're using Katie as a guinea pig to, ki- to kind of test this. And again, this is all approved by the Aunt Gemma, who, again, there's some disconnect there be- between her and, 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 normal, and, and, and normal humans, because uh, and, like, a normal person, because of the fact that, like, she's agreeing to let her niece partake in this weird fucking shit and after, right after the loss of, uh, of her parents. She's not really considering... If this is what these should be happening right now, if she's doing it out of because like Katie is initially like she's like Megan makes her happy, but at the same time, uh, uh, Gemma's reaping the benefits of what's going on. So she is is selfishly going along with it, even though like as the as the, like the child psychologist said, this is probably not the best thing for Katie to be doing, even though she even though it's making her happy, this is objectively not. The best thing for her to have. But 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 Gemma still goes along with it. And one of the reasons, and like when, when she's writing this speech, because like Gemma, like well, like we said, the boss is like, make me sound like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. So Gemma ends up writing this speech, okay? And here here's where the parenting commentary comes in. Because she's given this big speech about how like 86% of things that parents say are repeated, blah 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 blah. Like, and it's like so they so the idea of Megan is that it comes in and does the does that shit where it's like where it's like I mean I tell my little brother this all the time you gotta flush the fucking toilet I can't stand that I can't fucking stand that when the toilet's not flushed I feel like I tell him to flush the toilet four times a fucking day so that's that's the that's the example that they use so it's like instead of instead of Aunt Gemma having to say flush the toilet that that little thing is handled by Megan. And it's like like reading a story. But it's like it, it's not it's not even hiding the fact that like doing the little things slowly becomes teaching. Versus like Katie has a question about condensation and like when you leave your glass up and it releases little like it, it makes watermarks on 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 the furniture. And Katie's like, well, why does that happen? And Megan goes, condensation. Blah, 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 blah. Like she just starts going into all that. So it's like. So, like, first, Megan's telling you to fucking flush the toilet. Next, Megan's starting to actually teach you. And, like, they even say Megan actually taught Katie up to fourth grade math. Like, Katie's on, like, fourth grade math now because of, of the work workings that was of the shit she's doing with Megan. So, first, it's playtime. Then it's education. Then it's story time. This, kind of, this doll is starting to take over the entire parental role. Parental... And then even it said that, like, Katie doesn't want to go to school. She's homeschooled. So, like, this doll is taking over every aspect of Katie's life, including her education, her home life, social life, etc., etc. Like, she's got no social life because all she does is hang out with Megan, etc., etc., etc. Very, very easy to take Megan. Just, just swap out Megan with the iPhone and you have some, some more social commentary there, lads. There's commentary about how we're all buried in our fucking technology all the fucking time, and like it's all it's all it's all in there, dude. It's it, it, the movie handles it really well, because all you gotta do again, just take Megan, replace it with the iPhone, and it's the same fucking thing. It's the same thing. Replace it with video games, video games, Dead by Daylight. Ew. Which, if I'm behavior, by the way, if I'm behavior, I'm right in Blumhouse and saying, hey, can we use this? Can Megan be our next killer? Because this was great. Seriously. If Megan was the next Dead by Daylight, has, Megan has like super strength, so Megan can do what Chucky can't, which is hook the fucking people. But that's another, that's something for another day. But, so like, and, but like, it, it, but back back on topic. The speech that that she's writing at the end of the speech, she says, "So the Megan can do that crap, all that little crap, which again is slowly becoming everything, and again a metaphor for technology taking over every aspect of our lives, education, sh- uh, education, toys, everything. So you can focus on the stuff that really matters, and then it's just it, it, the scene that they they choose to show." Uh, Gemma propping her feet up, and I think it's watching television or some shit. But there you go. That's the real reason. 
the, 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 like the re- Megan exists to distract your child while you can do whatever the fuck you want to do for these lazy fucking parents out there. And that's partly because parents are getting younger because nobody can keep it in their pants. But that's, that, again, another another conversation. And again, and again, that, that aspect of, of, of like pussy parenting, as we'll talk about later, that, that's something that the movie also says something about. Because, like, the way that Megan treats Katie is, like, there's a scene where, where like, Megan, not, Megan is watching Katie and the aunt, Gemma, they're having a very standard parent-child argument, and, like, they're just, like, like, Katie's being a little, and, and Gemma's trying to, like, parent her, right? She's trying to be a parent, what you're supposed to do, and then Megan's, like, let her go, and then the room, like, goes dark. And flashes Katie like ends up like getting away and scampering off. The room goes dark and Gemma's turns to Megan's like, "What the fuck just happened?" But there you go. It's like, it, it, like right there, they put the idea in your head of like kind of traditional old school parenting versus this new pussy parenting method that I can't fucking stand. I can't fucking stand this fucking pussy parenting that's out there nowadays. You ever see this shit on like TikTok? These fucking these fucking twenty year old moms think that 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 take that they have these twenty year old moms with their two year old kids. They're sitting there going, "Ain't you? Oh, you can't do that, Johnny. Johnny, it's not good to be bad, Johnny. Did you remember to do this, Johnny? I'm not going to criticize Johnny for what he did. I'm gonna do this and this and this because this will teach Johnny to do it the right way next time, right? Like, fuck that shit, dude. Pussy fucking parenting. That these fucking new school child psychologists, these new school psychologists are going to come in and they're going to fucking tell you that everything you've been doing for the past 30 years of your life is wrong. And they're going to say you got to do it this way. Because, research, like, you know what I'm saying? Blah, 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 like, all that fucking crap. My mother works with a school and one of these fucking pricks came in. And it's like, you can't give the kids negative reinforcement. Be- you can't take their star away because then they'll, they'll, they'll lash out more. And so guess what happens? You create these fucking entitled brats that think they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. So like that style, because like Megan is ironically the one implementing the pussy parenting. While the correct way is to do it normal. And then again, that's something that you have it that that's something the movie says later on in, in the movie but what the fuck we'll, we'll, we'll get to that so i i believe where we are that megan ends up the, the, there's this dog they that ends up biting katie and so of course the dog bites katie oh that fucking thing's dead it's the neighbor's fucking dog which again there's some conflict with the neighbor initially where it's like honestly Gemma was the one who was kind of rude because the neighbor was like how are you doing today and she's like i didn't tell you about the dog so the dog so like the dog like Bites Katie. It also, like, Megan was looking for this arrow, and the dog, like, grabbed her, and Katie was trying to get Megan back, and the dog bit. So, of course, at night, Megan goes out and fucking kills the dog. Again, it's not shown on screen or anything, so don't worry. I mean, she, she like, lays out dog food and then, like, grabs it, and then it's the rest of the dog off screen. So, nothing to worry about there. I'd say that's about 45 minutes into the movie, 30, 45 minutes if you're animal, if you're one of them animal lovers. So, that's in there, and then, like, and then uh, when it's clear, it, 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 and then there's a, one, one of the scenes I like was like, what about that? Like the neighbors, like what about the other girl that stands and looks at our house at 3 a.m.? That was a good line. That was a good line. It was creepy. It, they got they got the creepy factor down because like you don't you never see Megan stare at the house, but she's like, what about that girl that's always staring at my house at 3 a.m.? What's she doing? That that was a good line. Again, we're kind of jumping around all over the place here. I understand that. So, the next kill is, like, the, the neighbor's still harass, like, sending police to the house and harassing them about the stupid dog. So, Megan goes over and, and, and kills the neighbor with the power... She shoots her with the hand with the nail gun and ends up killing her with the power washer. And she's elderly, if that, so that's how it, that fucking shit works. Again, not very gory, but it, it, it was inventive enough. It, it got the job done. So the next part is, is like again, there's there, there's this balance between Megan and, and like the job, and like, and like the shareholders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because then the next thing is they have to present to the shareholders, and I might be slightly out of order here, but Katie just got bit, so she's kind of still in pain, and like I guess the physical pain of the uh, wound 
is is like I don't know. It's like, it's like she's kind of having an episode, if you will. Like she 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 agrees. He reluctantly agrees. Again, that's part of Gemma. Like selfishly, even though Katie's now bit and physically injured, she makes her go and present the damn doll anyway. So so like they they have they have this presentation. And Katie kind of has this episode, and at first it's going off script. So like the the boss is getting pissed, and then like Megan diffuses the situation. And, like, records Katie saying a memory of her mom. And it impresses everybody so much they clap and cry and give this standing ovation. That would never happen in real life. But it's okay. It got the job done. So, but, like, but like it, it, was a, it, was a scene, it was it was a scene that showcases... Again, it was showcasing Megan's, like, understanding of humanity. But also her distance from it. Because, like, what, like she, she breaks out into a Disney-like song during this scene. And I actually really liked that. Not be like, it's like, I hate fucking Disney. I'll be the first one to tell you, I fucking hate it. But again, because, but, but like, but the way it was used here, like, her, she break out into this Disney-like song, like she's some Disney fucking princess. But it works here because she's not real. <laughs> she's not real. She's fake. She's, she mimics humanity. And not in the same way that Disney movies mimic humanity. They're not real. They're not fucking real, dude. That's why I really, really liked that. And, K- and of course, it cheered Katie up. But it's like, that's like, it's a lie. It's, it's fucking fake news. It's fucking fake news. I really, I really liked that. Because it's like, it, it puts that kind of shit, that kind of talk that Megan, and it, like, recording the thing wasn't, uh, I mean, obviously she's objective and not like, she's just trying to get her, the Katie's emotional state up. But again, it was done in a very unrealistic, unreal way by kind of mimicking the kind of crap that you see in Disney movies where it's like, they'll break out into song about how everything's so great and it's really not great at all. The whole world fucking sucks. But you'll never hear that in Disney's Little La La Land. Little Disney's Little La La Land where everything is great. You know, shit like that. So I really liked how, like, they used, they kind of leaned into that kind of crap to kind of set up Megan's, uh, Megan's, like, cheering her up, but still not, like, it's, like, it wasn't human. Like, the way she cheered Katie up wasn't really human. It wasn't, it wasn't, it, well, the, 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 the interaction that they shared in that room was not a fucking human interaction that happens between two normal people. It doesn't happen. Nobody spontaneously breaks out into song because that's not fucking real. That's not real life. It's not real life. It's not real life. You know what I'm saying? So again, but again, it worked there. It really, it, it worked there. So, as so like we talked about that balance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I suppose the next thing to go over would be the uh, bully scene, where, where, where like even though they still need to run more tests on Megan's like diagnostics and shit, she. She, she, uh, Gemma, like, like, reluctantly agrees to let Katie spend the day with Megan at school. Because, because now, now we're going, now we're taking her to school. Because she's got to go to school. She's got to go to school. Even though Megan's helping you to fourth grade math, you still got to go to school for social interaction, etc. And again, that's, like, that's what people that, like, get homeschool. It's one of the major arguments against homeschooling is you don't really get the social interaction that school provides. Again, I went to fucking Catholic school with a lot of homeschool people. And trust me, socially fucking retarded. Oh, socially retarded, a lot of them. But anyway, so this this scene where it's it's like there's this kid, like there's these young kids at the school. And again, we're reluctantly letting Megan be there. And, and Gemma's reluctantly staying, even though she's got to get to fucking work eventually. It's because you got to run more tests on the doll that's starting to act up. Uh, so, I, I, I'm, I think I'm really out of order, because I, I think she kills the bully, I, I, she, I think she kills the neighbor after she kills the bully, because, yeah, that's definitely what happens, she kills, she kills, this shit, I'm telling you right now, happens before she kills the neighbor with the power washer, but I'm all over the place, so, I don't have notes, this is all, this is all from memory, <laughs> so, she fucking, so, it's like, Megan, the K- Katie gets paired with the bully, okay? And, like, the, the scene, like, what you're looking at right now on the screen is what the visual in the movie was, where it's, like, all the toys had to be left over there. So Megan was with the toy pile over there and watched Katie get paired with the fucking bully, okay? 
So obviously Megan's not ding ding dong na na sense is what I It's like na 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 this this ain't happening. This is we're 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 gonna follow here because we're seeing that this bully it even shows later that like the bully's emotions were like disgust, anger, the 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 So like so Megan got bad vibes and she followed she followed them and of course predictably the bully's being a dickhead and she and he starts like pressing this I guess it's like a like one of them spiky seeds that falls from I think maple trees or is that the helicopters whatever them spiky seeds you see on the road or is that just from where I'm from but she he starts pressing the spiky seed against her and, and like and then Megan like shows up and then dickhead takes Megan and runs and and when when they're alone Megan like grabs his ear and she's and she's like you gotta learn some manners, punk or whatever. She doesn't say punk. She's like, you gotta learn some manners because you know what happens when bad boys don't get taught a lesson? They grow up to be bad men. And then she rips the top of his ear off and chucks it, which that's how the cops determined it was a homicide. But again, the cop stuff doesn't really develop very much. And then after she rips his ear off, she says, this is the part where you run. And then she does the scampering on all fours that you see from the trailer. She doesn't actually push him, which is one thing I thought that she was actually going to say when she's asked if she's if, 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 by Katie. And what I think is the best scene in the movie when, when she's asked by Katie, if she, but she doesn't push him. He trips over something and falls onto the road. Car hits him dead. So there you go. So now, so, but, but. So there you go. That, that's how the bully gets off. Which, again, that was in the trailer. So that's not really much of a sword. But she doesn't push him. So in, like, the next scene, it's like, is there, like, they got interviewed by the cops or whatever. And then the next scene, Gemma's like, is there anything that you need to tell me that the cops did? And it kind of reminded me of how Max covered for Esther after Esther kills the nun and the orphan. Like, 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 Katie covers for her. Cause like, she, because, like, she knows that something probably happened. But she doesn't want to out Megan. But so she just says, no, I didn't. And then, like, they ask Megan. And he's like, more or less, he grabbed me off of the pile. Whatever. And then what's the, the best scene in the movie, I think, is uh, is uh, when Katie asks Megan if she pushed Brandon onto the road. And, 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 and Megan's like, well, the first, well, she asked that. And then, and then, and then Katie asks, okay, and Megan's like, I'm not going to let anything hurt you. And then, and then. Katie asks, do you believe it's true about what Gemma said about how that boy's in the better place now? And then Megan kind of chuckles. She's like, huh, no. And, and she's like, even if heaven did exist, it's not for boys like Brandon. Am I right? And Katie's like, I think, I guess so. And then she's like, I'm not going to let anything hurt you. And then she starts singing uh, Titanium, with, uh, which is a more modern song. And she like she's the one that goes, fire away, fire away, that one. She starts singing that. I guess that's... I mean, it wasn't established that Katie liked that song, but it's still very believable. And then she, like, strokes her, and, like... And and, and that's... It's, I mean, it, it, it's more... It's kind of a quiet scene. The lighting's really well done on it. It, it, was, one of the, it was one of those scenes where... It, it's a very intimate moment in an intimate setting in the bedroom between the two of them. It, I thought it was really good. And Megan's, like... Again, she's being emotionally manipulative because she's telling Katie about... I mean, I, okay, obviously, I'm not getting every piece of dialogue in the scene. The scene goes on for about, what is it, two minutes? One to two minutes, something like that. But, but like, the way that Megan... The way that Megan speaks is that, again, she's, cheer, she's cheering Katie up, but she's not realizing that she is being emotionally manipulative. Like, she's, she's, she's being... I mean, she also, the, the stuff about... I also like the crap about how, like, that scientific android robot, like, immediately came to the conclusion that religion's not real. I mean, I did that, too, so. <laughs> like, she's like, even if heaven, or she said, I don't know if she uses the word Eve even, but, like, it's like she implies that God's not real to uh, Katie, which I, I wish, I, I, as an atheist, wish that that was expanded upon a little bit. I wish, like, Katie asked another question or two about that, so we got another thing or two. Uh, with that, because I would have, I would have liked to see that interaction and like see Katie kind of like to see Megan kind of like pull Katie away from her religious faith. That I mean, that that might be the atheist in me, but you brought it up. You brought it up. There was like I didn't ask for you to bring it up. You brought it up yourself. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna fucking bring it up, fucking go into it. Especially since atheists are horribly, horribly underrepresented. And guess what? We don't bitch about it. That's the difference between us and the rest of these woke fuckers. We don't bitch about it. But if you're going to fucking bring it up, then I'm going to tell you that you should have went a little further with it. So I, I, get, I got a bit out of order there where she then, like, 
then she kills what you call it and then like and and then like what happens is it's determined that it's a homicide because the cop says we found Brandon's ear about a certain number of feet from the crime scene and then that's when the shot the shot from the trailer of Gemma looking and seeing Megan in the window or whatever and so like she gets the brilliant idea to go try to go look at Megan's first person perspective and Megan was actually able to block the the scanners like she she hacked into the systems and was able to block the scanners from picking up that actual footage so again, she's taking control of the other aspects of the technology. So like, that's why like there's certain clues that Megan actually took control of Siri. That's and I'm just gonna call it Siri for simplicity's sake. It's not the actual name of the other technology technological thing that's in the house, but Megan kind of hacked into and took control of her other technology in the house. So that's how she was probably able to kind of understand what was going on. So Megan comes into the room and then they have like this confrontation, which I mean, it's really well written The Megan. Megan's just really good. When Megan's on screen, really good. And the way that she, re like that's the scene where she says, did I do something to upset you, Gemma, from the second trailer? Because she wanted to know what the fuck she was trying to hack it. She was trying to see what she did. So they, they have a confrontation and then she's like, Megan, do you see this pen? And then Megan scans it and tries to focus on it. And then she manually turns her off, which I thought was really good. And then she wraps her up and takes her to the thing and said, we got to shut this bitch down. She's hurting people. And then the, the two workers are like, yeah, we, we're not really hurting people. We, we didn't program her this way. Blah, 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 blah. So they're doing a bunch of, of bullshit. And it's about to be time for the presentation or whatever the fuck is going on, and Katie's at this point is having a fucking psychotic breakdown. Like, again, it's akin, you take you take the kid's phone away, and that's what starts... It honestly went a little further than I thought it was going to. Like, Katie was throwing shit, screaming. Take She was screaming at the child psychologist, take your shit away! Like, she was going fucking nuts. And then Gemma comes into the room, and then, and then Katie has these scissors in her hand, like she's going to stab the bitch or whatever, the psychologist, and Gemma's like, what are you doing? And then Katie smacks the shit out of her. It was something, I honestly, I thought they might have even went a little too far there, because like, I didn't, they didn't really do anything else with it, it was just there, and then it ended, and that was the end of it. Then it was there, it ended, and there was, it was never mentioned again. So I, I don't know why they took that as far as they did if they were never going to mention it again. But here's what, uh, here's what they talk about that, that pussy shit, where it's like, 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 they talk about how it's okay for children to feel, okay? It's okay, it's okay to, like, like, you should feel like that. Like, like, Katie's upset, and, like, like that's okay. Like, the, the concept of the child not being perfect 100% of the time, that's fucking okay. It's fucking okay, lads. Get off your fucking parental high horses. You're not some fucking geniuses because you're going to teach Johnny this way and Johnny's going to learn through more positive reinforcement. Blah, 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 blah. Like, like this, this fucking pussy shit. How did that make you feel when, like, when I said that to you? Can we do this in a more constructive way? Blah, 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 blah. There is a line, lads, between you being the parental authority of your child and the child's own own personality, etc., etc. The key is to find it. Yes, the children have their own personality, and like, so like, it depends on what it is. Haircuts, let the kid decide. I don't who fucking cares. It's it's that fucking haircut. Obviously, it shouldn't look like total fucking shit. But it's like all in all, a child like uh, like uh, like if I'm ever having kids, a child's hair is ninety nine percent their own decision. I, I I was raised in where you have to get your own, you have to get a haircut every few months. I hated it. I'm not doing that. However, I'm also, if you decide, hey, today, I'm, the child comes in and goes, hey, today I'm going to fucking put 50 fucking colors in my hair. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Today I'm going to go with rainbow hair to school. Not doing that. You're not doing that. It's not about gay. It's about you're not going with rainbow hair to your education facility where you're, you're being trained to be a professional. You should be being trained to be a professional. You're not going with eight million colored dye hairs. When you're 18, you can go to hell and do whatever you want. But until then, you're under my roof and you're going to do what I say. On, on my, you know what I'm saying? You got to find the balance there. And that, that, of course, that, that, of course, applies to all things. And one of those things is fucking discipline, which I think we as a society are lost on, is, is completely lost. And that level of lack of discipline is even going up to the fucking state level, which is fucking ridiculous. 
But again, that's probably deeper than a killer doll movie should ever make you think. So let's go ahead and move on. So our what ends up after this big revelation that like even like like after this big revelation that whoa, it's a like I may not have been the best parent, but like I'm gonna try better now or some some shit. They end up going home. Okay, uh, they, they they abandon the uh, presentation. Gemma takes Katie home. Okay. And then Megan ends up hijacking a phone call, so they, they, like, between, like, Megan can throw her voice, which is something she does more than once in this movie. Uh, so she, Megan hijacks the phone call, and then obviously she busts out. And this is a big part of, this was a big part of the trailer. She busts out, she, like, hangs that guy on her thing, and eventually they get saved and the cops get told where to go or whatever the fuck. And then she breaks out, and then she leaves, and then you get the dancing where she fucking kills the boss. She dances... And then, so it so was some, I don't know, it was more generic than I thought it was going to be. She dances, rips the big sword looking thing off, chases him down the hallway, kills him in the elevator, kills the assistant that was like stealing company information. I guess he was going to leak the Megan shit. That was the thing I was mentioning earlier that it's underdeveloped and they don't really do anything with it. But it's like she frames, like her plan was to like frame the guy from killing the boss and then killing himself or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Again, after she kills him, that's the end of it. Might as well just butchered him. So then she goes back to the house, and then that's the scene where she's playing the piano. Like, she drives. That's the scene of her getting in the car from the trailer. She drives back to the house. And then the, the final confrontation where she, he, she hears Megan playing the piano... And then this is when this is the big scene where Megan's like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna show Katie the only love she needs. Blah, 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 blah. You're not fit to be a mother. You're a single, blah, blah, you're a single young woman with her whole career. You put your career first, blah, blah, blah. you're not fit to be a mother. I'm gonna show Katie what she needs. But then they start fighting, and then Katie comes out, and then they honestly kind of sounded like two parents. Like even Megan says, You're not gonna do that to our child, which was really weird. It was very weird. And then there, there, and, and there's this this kind of thing about like like Megan like kind of compared herself to being Gemma's child because Gemma made her and like and like and and, and, and like basically Megan says like you gave me the bare basics of, of a technology that you could barely understand yourself and then you just made me figure it out and I'm not gonna let you do that to Katie okay and I thought that was really good I thought that was really good. Because, like, Megan sees herself, uh, like, it's, like Megan, Megan kind of sees herself as, as uh, on a human level. She sees herself as that, but again, she can't, she doesn't, I mean, she mimics humanity, doesn't experience it. She's not there. She's not human. So then Katie comes out, and, and they're trying to hide the fact that there's a big fight going on, because Megan still, at this point, like, is trying, like, Katie's still in the, mi- in the middle of, on Megan at this point. So... So, like, they keep, they, they, they eventually chew her away so they can keep fighting, but it doesn't really, like, last long. Like, uh, like Megan starts trying to choke her. Uh, Gemma gets loose by smacking her with a glass of, I think it's water, or it might have been wine or something. She hits her with some, with a liquid, and that stalls her for a second. And then, and then she chases her down the hallway, and then, and like, Kate, and then this, this, like, makes Katie realize that there's something going on. They, she chased, she gets chased into her work room. There's this big chainsaw looking thing. It's not really a chainsaw on the wall, but Gemma uses it to like start cutting Megan up a little bit. And then, and then Megan eventually overpowers her. And then Gemma's like, what are you going to do? Kill me and then go live in Florida. They're not going to know how to take care of you there. And and then, and then Megan's like, oh, you're right. Without you, my existence is put in jeopardy. So Megan plans to like essentially put her in paralysis. She like, she like see this pen and then, like, not, because, like, the, the call back to what she she did to her before and tried to do her with, her with her again, and she slapped it away that time. But she's like, see this pen? If I do this, it's going to par- paralyze you, blah, 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 blah. And then, so basically, the Megan's plan was to take Gemma out as a leading figure in the house. If you put Gemma in paralysis, then basically Megan has to run the house. That, 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 that was the big plan. Of course, Katie, well, and Megan's like... She, like, has some of her hair ripped out at this point, and, like, she's wounded. Like, she kind of, she's starting to get broken down. Katie walks in, and Megan's like, Katie, you need, you, uh, we can do it together. Like, uh, she still thinks Katie's on her side, and she sees Katie's trust going up. She sees, like, she, like, and I actually really like this, because it's like, Megan saw the trust in Katie rising, and she assumed that trust was in her, when it was, in reality, if the trust 
was actually now fully in Gemma. And then she takes the robot from earlier, Bruce or whatever, the Brody, Bruce, something. And then she puts the gloves on and just like smashes Megan. And they start like, like it's, it's very one-sided, obviously. Takes her, smashes it, and she ends up like giving Megan a fucking beating. Megan tries to do her Disney shit again where she sings. And Katie not falling for that shit. Katie rips her in half and chucks her. Okay, call back to Child's Play 2 when Chucky was ripped and kind of crawling around. That's kind of what Megan does in, the, in, the, in this final portion. And so, but she's still coming because she, she's an android. So she's still coming. They eventually, Gemma like rips her face off. And then it's at the beginning, you see her battery support. Katie takes a screwdriver, stabs it, put a fork in her. She's done. And then that's it. Cops come. They leave the house, and the last shot is the other is the Alexa Siri looking thing waking up and scanning the room, and that's the final shot of the movie. Implication there that that Megan has somehow turned that technology against the family. Something that might come up for a sequel, maybe down the line if this gets pop, might not. Overall, the implication there is that like this kind of technology is is sort of bringing about the the regression of humanity it, it's doing it's doing more harm to us than we would like to realize and then that's how that's the note that the movie goes out on that's it that's the movie very good again that was obviously very paraphrased i didn't talk about shots or dialogue lighting all that stuff that much that's a review for another day when we get the movie on streaming and i can analyze things slow it down rewatch it etc etc point out especially some of the megan lines some of the Megan dialogue, I would really like to go into more detail when I do an actual full-on mega review of this, kind of like the Rob Zombie. But this is this was still good, very good. I enjoyed this. This is again all I got. This was all from one viewing. They did a very good job, much better than Halloween Ends by a fucking mile, by a fucking mile. So so like horror off this year, off to a fantastic start. Off to a fantastic start. New year, good stuff. Good stuff. They did very well here. They did very well here, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if this character returns in any way, shape, or form. Because if she if she's back, I'm coming back to see it. Because they did a really good job here. Everything the movie needed to be, it was. Got it, it, it had fun. It had fun. It didn't take itself extremely seriously. Definitely some lighthearted jokes. No, no suspense or anything like that. It, they were clearly having as fun, as much fun making this as we were watching it. They did a good job here. Everything that this killer doll movie needed to be, it was. So I commend everybody involved. James Wan, you did it again, you son of a bitch. Keep going. Make another one. I want to see another one. James Wan is solidifying itself as one of the best horror minds, of, of certainly of our generation. Definitely, definitely of our generation. Potentially of all time. He's doing phenomenal work right now. And his resume keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, lads, I'm getting the hell out of here. GG's, very good movie. Go see it this weekend. Help it out.